Hey and welcome back to our long promised report on the 2021 developments of reaction engines. I've been following reaction engines for years, ever since I worked on a film with one of the company's founders, Alan Bond. And he impressed me so much. He wanted to build this. Hotel, a space plane for the public to fly from London to Sydney in only a few minutes. And Alan Bond admitted he got his genius idea for a hybrid air-breathing rocket engine from Dan Dare. But by a lack of investment and foresight by the British government, Hotel didn't get off the ground. But what it did do was to demonstrate the difficulties of a hybrid space plane. To fly that fast and that high, you need to go at hypersonic speeds. Let's define hypersonic speeds as above Mach 5. And at Mach 5, things get rather hot. There are no conventional air breathing engines that would operate at those type of temperatures. And just to be clear, those high temperatures are caused by the inrush of air at those speeds being heated up by friction that would melt any conventional turbine engine. So Alan Bond and his team came up with this, the Sabre engine. And what's so special about the Sabre engine? Well, it borrows a nose cone from the SR-71 that moves and redirects a shock wave and slows down the air going into the engine. But Reaction Engine's most fantastic development was a way of overcoming the heat of air friction. And to solve that problem, they came up with this their intercooler. It amazingly can reduce the temperature of the air from a thousand degrees to freezing in a fraction of a second. In my last film, we discussed a bit how it worked and we were left with a mystery of what the cooling product was. Well, it's now been revealed that they use liquid hydrogen or possibly helium in these capillary tubes to actually cool the air before it goes into the next stage of the engine. And here it is. This is the core of the Sabre engine. This is the air breathing bit that works in our atmosphere. So the whole concept of a hybrid engine is why carry all that oxidizing agent when you're in the air? If only you could use the air from our planet to burn the fuel while you're in the atmosphere. And that's what the central core engine does. And then seamlessly at incredibly high speeds, the reaction engines, the rocket engines work in space. Now using the onboard oxygen in these tanks, but much less than a conventional rocket. And so reaction engines moved on. They moved on from HOTL, a public space plane, you know, a development of Concorde, and they entered the sticky world of single stage to orbit rockets. So what exactly is an STO, or single stage to orbit rocket? Well, Conventional rockets just light the blue touch paper and blast into orbit. Most of them are expendable, and who cares if you're just being cheap? The idea of a space plane that can take off from a runway, breathe air in the atmosphere, fly into the vacuum of space, do its satellite work, and then return safely through the atmosphere and land on a runway is a dream. And that idea was very much the second iteration of Reaction Engines as a company. Let's build this, the single stage to orbit space plane to deploy commercial satellites. But it didn't work. When it came down to it, the whole concept was so expensive that it made no economic sense to make an air breathing single stage to orbit space plane. They're complex. So using muscle power, people just blast into space. And this is a little aside. While researching pictures to illustrate this film on reaction engines, I noticed something terrible. One of my favorite things about the company was this, their original logo with references to the Festival of Britain and the Skylon. Dan Dare and Eric Revillius all rolled into one, and they've replaced it with this. Ah, it looks like a logo from a British Leyland Austin Allegro. 
So what exactly is Reaction Engines doing today in 2021? Well, Alan Bond has retired. He still plays a minor role in the company. But Reaction Engines, I've noticed, has fundamentally changed. And what happened was the United States military saw an application for the intercooler and the Sabre engine, not to fly holidaymakers to Australia, but to deliver hypersonic weapons. And I personally find this rather disappointing. Gone are my childhood dreams of flying to Australia in a couple of minutes, or taking off on a runway in Makrahanish and flying into orbit. The genius of Alan Bond with his intercooler, his air-breathing core engine, and the whole Sabre engine design has become a missile deployment system. And I noticed something very British about reaction engines. If you go to the Lockheed Martin or Raytheon or Boeing page, they're quite up front. We build hypersonic missiles to deliver weapons anywhere in the world. Whereas the rather coy British reaction engines are saying, we formed a partnership with leading aerospace companies. Yeah, weapon systems? And even on Reaction Engine's website, you can see that they've moved on from HOTL, they've moved on from single stage to orbit, and now there's one or two illustrations of these kind of craft. And I can understand why they're doing it. They've no doubt got vast development funds from military to build a hypersonic transport vehicle. Maybe it's actually more than there than I actually think. <laughs> but to give Reaction Engine's their due, they employ a lot of very talented engineers in Britain. They're reaching out to other industries who could also use this fabulous intercooler device, power generation, even electric vehicle battery management. And they've also secured funds from leading European backers. So I don't personally expect to travel on an intercontinental hypersonic jet airliner. I don't expect to see a single stage to orbit space plane taking off from a runway near me. But what I do see is an intercontinental hypersonic ballistic missile. So what I've said is very subjective and very personal. No doubt reaction engines have the best intentions and they're moving forward with a successful company. But for me, they seem to have moved on from Alan Bond's childhood dream to become yet another defense contractor. The truth is out there.